Hello, and welcome to the Michigan Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We thank you for joining us tonight. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening this evening, so please be sure to sign up for additional ones if interested after. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Michigan. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter of the evening, the University of Essex. Thank you, Kelsey. I'll just begin by sharing my screen. Hopefully you can all see that. Hi everyone, my name is Emma and I work in the marketing and student recruitment team at the University of Essex. I have about six minutes to speak with you, so I've kept this nice and simple and put together six of my favourite things about the University of Essex. So first up is location. The University of Essex has three campuses located in Colchester, South End and Loughton. Colchester is the largest of our three campuses where most of our students study and most of our courses are taught. That aerial uh, picture at the bottom there is um, a bird's eye view of the, um, of the campus. It sits on 200 acres of beautiful award winning uh, parkland. One of the best things about uh, Essex is the location and the fact that we're really easily um, located or accessible to London. London is an amazing city, but it's really expensive. And all three campuses are located less than an hour by train. So if you're wanting to make the most out of London, then you can do really, really easily, um, but you're not paying uh, London prices. Fun fact about Colchester is it is the UK's oldest recorded town. So there's some really beautiful Roman architecture around the town itself. In that top picture, you can see a picture of um, Castle Park. Um, so where we're located, we are in the southeast of the UK, you can see on the map there where each of our campuses is located. Um, and in the southeast, we have some of the UK's best weather and the lowest amount of rainfall. So if studying somewhere or living somewhere dry and relatively sunny is important to you, then Essex could be a good match. Um, but on a serious note, it's uh, a, an amazing and wonderful mix of Coast, being a coastal town, so being close to the beaches, close to the city, um, and surrounded by some beautiful countryside as well. So next up is academic teaching. In 2018, we were awarded University of the Year, which in uh, the higher education sort of industry is kind of the equivalent to the Os Oscars. So that was something we were incredibly proud of. We, rang, we were rated gold in the teaching excellence framework. Um, so that's the highest accolade and testament to the quality of the teaching. We're top 25 for our research quality. So we're a research led university and we're a university really well known for our social sciences. So in particular, politics politics, international relations, sociology, criminology, um, law, human rights, these are subjects that we're consistently well ranked for. And our business school is in the top 2% worldwide. Something that's amazing about our teaching is we have a really interdisciplinary approach. So you can pick different classes or modules across different departments and really shape the degree around your interests. We have a huge wide range of subjects, which I definitely don't have time to go into, but that link there will um, take you to our course finder where you can search our subjects in some detail if you wish to. Okay, so number three is student life. We have over 160 different sports clubs and societies, so I am sure that there would be something, um, one of our sports clubs or societies that would be of interest to you. Um, we guarantee on-campus accommodation for our international, um, for all of our students for, for, the, for the first year. So our Colchester campus kind of has a mini city vibe where everything that you could possibly need is on campus. So you would live on campus, you, you, you would be taught on campus. We have all sorts of facilities um, that you can enjoy and take advantage of as well. We're actually ranked seventh for spend on services and facilities per student. So we're pumping money back into our campuses for students to take advantage of. A couple of examples of that include our brand new sports arena which has amazing basketball and volleyball um, facilities and also we have a brand new stem center on campus too 
So next up is cost effective. Degrees uh, in England are three years in length. So already that's one whole year's worth of fees that you don't have to pay for. And our fees are really competitive. They do vary slightly from course to course. So you've been looking at paying somewhere between 16 and a half to 19 and a half thousand pounds per academic year. So particularly if you're comparing to out of state, state tuition, then studying in the UK is very, very competitive. We have some really competitive scholarships as well. So um, our America's regional scholarship is worth £3,000 towards your tuition. We have a number of sports scholarships too. So if you're a comp competitive athlete, um, then you might be eligible for one of our sports scholarships. And we have an IB excellent scholarship too, which is automatic and based on merit. We are FAFSA accredited at Essex. So if you're wondering how you might fund your studies in uh, the UK, then you can certainly use a federal aid at the University of Essex. So number five is employability. If um, you're a particularly career orientated student then a placement year might be a really good opportunity for you. A placement year and a study abroad year are sandwiched in between your degree. So you would do your first and second year at university. You then have the opportunity to do a placement year, which would be getting, you would be getting industry experience and then you would come back and complete your studies in your fourth year. So that would take four years, but you would be doing, one of those years would be doing a placement year and hopefully getting some really valuable experience and also being paid for a lot of the, um, lots of, lots of the placements that you are paid and some of them very well. 91% of our undergraduate students are in employment or further studies. So that's a really high percentage of students that are either um, working within a few months of graduating or have gone on to do a master's. And we have employability modules built into our undergraduate degree. So we're preparing you for the workplace once you've finished your studies. Skills and CV workshops um, as well, we offer, and there are networking and career events on campus too. We also offer a languages for all programs. So you can learn a la language completely for free alongside your degree. Green. And this is probably my favourite thing about Essex, just how international the university is. We're fourth in the UK for international outlook. It's not just our students, it's, it's our staff as well that are from all over the world. And it's our curriculum. We have a really international curriculum. We have over 15,000 students and 140 40 nationalities, so that's almost 40% of our students that are from outside the UK, so you'll be st studying, living, working, hopefully making lifelong friends with people from all over the world. And I think I just have time to share my contact details with you, so if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to contact me and I'll pop them in the chat now as well. Thank you for listening. Thanks Emma. Next up we are going to hear from Oxford Brookes University. Yeah. Uh... My screen. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Siobhan Frank. I'm the Global Recruitment Manager here at Oxford Brookes University. Uh, I sound like I'm from North America. I am from Toronto initially, but uh, uh, I did move to Oxford about three years ago, so I am situated in Oxford. Um, we'll go on. So a little bit about the city. Uh, Oxford Brookes University is located in Oxford. Uh, Oxford itself is about an hour away from London. Uh, we've got direct transport or direct uh, links into the city. So we have a 24 hour bus line system that actually takes you to and from the city with a stop directly outside of the Headington campus, which is really great. Uh, we're also close to uh, London Heathrow Airport and London Gatwick Airport. Uh, so again, we do have a bus line system here in the in the city that takes you directly to and from those airports. So it's nice and easy to uh, travel back and forth. You don't have to worry about having a car because it's nice and easy uh, to use the public transit links. Now you might recognize the name of the city. We do share the city with uh, another very famous university. Uh, so Oxford Brookes University and the University of Oxford both share uh, Oxford as a city, as a home. Um, what that means is that we do have a very high student population here in the city. One in every four adults are actually students. So it is very much a student friendly city and a lot of things do cater towards students here. Now Oxford itself, because there is a lot going on with the universities and there's a lot of innovative hubs as a result and, and startups as a result of the universities and the works that are the work that's happening at the universities. Uh, we are actually uh, found at the center of industry and enterprise. Uh, so not only are we in the middle of uh, Motorsport Valley, we have three major publishing houses here in the city. Uh, we have major biotech, biomedicine firms, uh, research uh, institutions that happen in and around the city. So there's lots of different things, particularly if you're interested in potentially getting some type of work experience while you're here, uh, being close by to all of those industry settings. Uh, 
Now, as an Oxford Brooks student, you'll have access to what's called the Bodleian Library. Uh, so that's the University of Oxford's library system. Uh, that's a very large library system. It's one of the UK's four uh, uh, legal repositories of books. So every book that's printed in the UK, uh, the Bodleian Library will have a copy. So in addition to our 24-hour uh, on-site uh, library services, you'll also have access to that. You'll also have access to what's called the Oxford Union, which is a debating society. Um, in addition to kind of having those debating societies in those events, they also do run a number of different events. So uh, they've had anywhere from Game of Thrones cast to uh, political and world leaders to famous rappers come and speak. So uh, quite an interesting uh, mix of people that you can hear speak there. And in the middle there, you can see a little bit of a snapshot of what Oxford looks like itself. Now we do have another picture here. So up on our top left, that's what's called Broad Street. Uh, Broad Street is one of our main downtown uh, streets and that gives you a sense of what Oxford as a city looks like. It's quite beautiful, uh, very old buildings here. Now in the middle, one of my favorite pictures and I always love talking about it, uh, you can see some of our students that are doing what's called punting. So this is a very famous sort of summer activity here in Oxford uh, and you'll see students and you'll see tons of people kind of on the river uh, in the summertime uh, punting along the river. It's usually customary, you'll see with people with picnics, uh, Prosecco, you know, they have straw hats on there as well. So bottom left, just to give you a couple of shots uh, of, the, uh, of the campus. So bottom left, you can see our school of law. So that's where your law students uh, typically, or most of their uh, course is held. Now over here on our right, you can also see our John Henry Brooks building. So this kind of is in stark contrast to the historic buildings here uh, on campus. Uh, it was refinished in 2014. Uh, you can see it does very much have a strong architectural theme. And that is because we do have a very strong architecture program here at the university. So that ethos does carry through. Now about Oxford Brooks, we've got four main faculties. So we have the Business School, Health and Life Sciences, Humanities and Social Sciences, and the Technology Design and Environment. And within that, we have a number of different schools and uh, departments. So we've got about 200 undergraduate programs, uh, three-year programs here in the UK, as Emma pointed out. Uh, and most of our programs do offer that option for that uh, sandwich year or work placement year. So uh, you can get some really great experience there as well. Now, we do hold a number of different accolades. Again, I, I love showing sort of pictures of campus to get you a chance uh, to see sort of uh, the types of facilities that you'll be using. So in addition to the number of different accolades, so we've got, uh, we're ranked among the world's top universities in 13 different subject areas. So that does include things like business and management, politics and international studies, English language and literature, engineering, real estate and social studies. And here on this picture, I just wanted to show you a little bit of what you can expect when you're working here at uh, or studying here at Oxford Brooks. We do have some of the top of the line equipment. Uh, our students do get access to some of that top of, line, top of the uh, line equipment while they're studying. So here on our left hand side, you can see some of the kit our motorsport engineering students use. On our right, you can see our sport and exercise uh, nutrition and science students uh, working away there. In the middle, uh, we are very well known, internationally recognized for our rowing team as well. Now, some entry requirements, fees, and funding. Uh, we have just gone test optional this year, so that's probably a welcome surprise to many uh, students who are interested today. Uh, so we do accept a high school diploma from a 3.0 GPA. Some of our courses might have some subject specific requirements, which can be met via either uh, honors degrees uh, or honors courses or APs. Now our tuition ranges from around that 14,000 to 17,000 pounds, and we accept FAFSA Veterans Loans Affairs, uh, Veterans Loans Benefits and Sally Mae um, loans as well. Now how, I'll skip kind of the how to apply. I'm sure it'll get covered a little bit um, here. You can use UCAS, but feel free to reach out if you've got any questions at all about how to apply. You can either have a look at our website at www.brooks.ac.uk or get in touch with me directly at frank at brooks.ac.uk. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next up, we are gonna hear from American College Dublin. Okay, everyone, I'm just gonna share my screen really quickly. Sorry, setting my timer. <laughs> okay. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sarah Healy and I am the admissions representative for the American College Dublin uh, here in the US. 
So I love to start off the presentation with this really uh, cool picture um, of one of the streets in Dublin. The reason I start with it is because I think it's a really great representation of the city as a whole. Um, as you can see, there's tons going on. There's lots of restaurants, um, pubs, stores, uh, libraries, just a lot of different things to check out um, and a lot of nooks and crannies to discover. Uh, I like, we'll talk about it a little bit later uh, in the presentation, but we really like to encourage our students to go out into the city um, and really make the most of what they have to offer, which you can see from just this one street uh, is a lot. So if you bring your view to the back of the picture, you will see St. Anne's Church, and that is the church where we hold our formal graduation ceremonies. Uh, so it's something for you all to look forward to a little further down the road. We are an Irish American university, which means we uphold the standards of accrediting bodies from both Ireland and the US. So what this means for you as a student is two paths that you can take. So one path is a three year undergrad track and that would be through the quality and qualifications Ireland. So it would be three years and you would just take the classes under the degree um, that you chose. So say you um, are enter ACD um, with the intent of graduating with an international business degree. You would just take courses uh, under the international business degree. Um, and then if you choose the other track, that would be a, the four-year track, which we see more commonly here in the US, uh, which is where you take the classes um, under your degree and also other electives outside of, outside of your degree. So this really gives you an opportunity um, to pick the path that best suits you as a student. Also, you can see that your degree will carry throughout both Ireland and the US, um, depending on you know, where you wanna um, have a career after you graduate. Um, we have extremely small lectures. They're typically less than 20 students, um, but we do this on purpose because this arrangement really allows for the classroom to be an extremely interactive experience. Our students are constantly breaking out into smaller groups and having smaller discussions and bringing it in front of the whole class. Our professors love to use different forms of media to get the lesson across. So it's definitely not um, like a, a classroom where the professor is just speaking at you. It's definitely more of a discussion where you can bring your own opinions and perspective in. So Dublin is your campus. As I mentioned before, we absolutely encourage your students to get out in the city. We find that to be um, just as important as inside of the classroom. It's great because Dublin is a primarily English speaking city. So even though you are abroad, um, there's not a, a huge language barrier. The people are extremely friendly. They're willing to you know, help you with directions, anything like that. Um, we are located right in the heart of Dublin on Marion Square. We are literally a 30 second walk from the National Gallery of Ireland. So there is tons to see and everything in Dublin is like at most a 15 minute walk from each other. So it's not a very overwhelming city. So you still have that sense of community, um, which is why I love it so much. I wanted to briefly talk about our administration. So like our classes, it is small by design um, with an emphasis on reducing bureaucracy. And what that means is that our, all of our offices operate under an open door policy. We really encourage you as a student to drop by, say hello, get to know the people that work at the school and your professors, um, because we really wanna be able to accommodate you as a student in any way, any way you would need. And to make that more, um, to make that as catered to you as possible, we really wanna have those open dialogues and you know, making sure that you're doing well in your classes. So these are the programs that we offer, that three-year um, track in international business and liberal arts, and then our four-year BA in international business, hospitality management, event management, and liberal arts, and then four-year BFAs in musical theater, performance, and creative writing. So we welcome applicants from every corner of the globe, and because of that, our requirements are definitely aimed at gathering more of a holistic view of the applicant. So in other words, we really want to get to know who you are as a person 
And as a student, uh, we wanna know what your interests are, what your passions are, what drives you. Um, so because of that, what's required is a minimum 2.0 GPA um, for any mature transfer students, a resume or CV, and then a personal statement uh, that describes why you would like to study your chosen area at ACT. So this is kind of your time to shine. Um, this is your opportunity to really um, paint a very vibrant picture of who you are as a student. This is the spot we, where we will be able to get to know who you are. Uh, we are a test optional school. So, you know, all of those things are optional. You're more than free to include them, um, but you will not be penalized if you do not. I'm running out of time, uh, but this is our tuition and fees. So for our BFA, um, it is a little bit more just because of different material and um, different locations you have classes. And I will put my contact information in the chat. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Thank you, Sarah. Next up, we are gonna hear from IE University. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dersa Bustani. I'm the local representative of IE University in the Northeast. And uh, basically, I'm here to introduce you to IE University. Uh, all of our degrees are entirely taught in English, and we're very proud to have seven different accreditations, which means that you can study and work across 120 different nationalities after your uh, time at IE. All of our bachelor degree are four years lo long. They can be uh, attended in our campus in Segovia or the one in Madrid. And uh, all of our classes are entirely taught in English. However, every single student have access to taking uh, Spanish classes to good their studies. Our programs varies from uh, STEM programs to liberal art programs to uh, data analytics program programs. And they're all uh, very interesting. Uh, we also offer dual degrees, which is basically the opportunity to combine two degrees and get a double degree in five years instead of uh, more. Uh, and uh, one of the stellar program is uh, our Bachelor in Law and International Relations, our Bachelor in Business Administration and Law. What kind of students do we welcome on campus and are we usually interested in? We welcome every year 4,100 students coming from across 50 plus different education system. 75% of our students are international students and we have 45 plus languages spoken on campus. In general, we have 130 plus nationalities in the undergraduate student body and uh, which are divided between our two campuses, the one in Segovia and Madrid. Our campus in Segovia, is actually older than the United States. It's a monument preserved by UNESCO. And although the monument is extremely historic, the facilities are extremely modern, which makes it extremely convenient and interesting to be a place to study in. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, uh, the castle of Segovia is actually one of the castles that inspired the logo of Disney. And our campus in Madrid is very central. Here I'm gonna introduce you to the tower. Uh, this September will be like the very first generation center there. Just uh, middle of the financial district of uh, Madrid. The tallest uh, uh, technological campus in Europe and the fifth tallest uh, campus in the world. Uh, it was made to the material of Was our campus. 
uh, at IE, we believe in experiential learning and we also want our students to uh, take their future into their own hands and shape their program according to their preferences. Uh, so every student has the opportunity to pick their elective and advanced seminar. Uh, we offer international exchange program on your third year and in most of our, degree, of our degree, you can go for a semester or two. Uh, also, our students have access to internships and IEU labs. For instance, here you have the name of all of the labs and I'll give you the example of the communication lab. They worked with Twitter on the campaign of the city of Madrid uh, during COVID. And it was very interesting for students to work on it and have an idea of how it functioned alongside the team at Twitter. In terms of the international exchange uh, opportunities, I mentioned it earlier, we have 160 plus partners among other Cornell in the US and McGill in Canada. We also have a dual uh, summer program with Brown University, where you have the opportunity to transfer your credit, learn more about sustainability and uh, study in Providence. Uh, in terms of activities as a campus, uh, we have five different podcasts on campus. We have our own newsletter and we have 100 and plus active IEU clubs varying from uh, nationalities, interest-based or career interest-based uh, group. And it's extremely interesting. In terms of ranking, we're the first university in Spain, seven in Europe, 23rd worldwide. 95% of our students find the job over graduation. And we actually accept online application on Common App or on our own platform. Uh, you would also need to submit a test score and take an online assessment before being invited for an interview. Thank you. That was IE University. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Next up, we are gonna hear from the University of East Anglia. Awesome, thanks so much, Kelsey. My name is Alana Stewart. I am the Regional Manager for the University of East Anglia. And like all of you, I am based in the great state of Michigan. I'm in the Metro Detroit area. So really close to all of you. The University of East Anglia is also known as UEA and we were founded in 1963, which makes us relatively young. But since then, we've done a great job establishing ourselves and are within the world top 200 institutions and also within the UK top 25. And so the professors that you learn under are doing top level. We do have a wide variety of subjects areas um, for faculties in 23 schools that I'll show you later is uh, so pretty much a little bit of something for study. We have about 17,000 students from a wide variety of countries in the world. Our location is Norwich, England, so where the pink star is on that map, that area of the country is known as East Anglia, so that's where we get our name from. Uh, North itself is a smaller city at about a city for um, for that area of the country. We are a shopping destination for shops, also um, other uh, other shops that you might be interested in that are are more worldwide. There's a castle downtown you can see on the left hand side and two cathedrals um, also. We are known as an affordable city as well as a safe city on top of that. Um, so it is a great place and our students constantly talk about how much they end up falling in love with Norwich itself. Um, and then we do have a high amount of vegan restaurants. And I mentioned this, um, even if you're not a vegan yourself, just kind of speaks to the eclectic nature that we do have in Norwich. We're also only about 30 minutes from the coastline. So like in Michigan, you're never too far from the beach, kind of the same thing in the UK, but you're about 30 minutes away um, from the beach itself and we're easy to get to with our own international airport or you can take a train or a bus up from London. The train is about an hour and a half um, of a journey to our campus. Or to get to the city center. So our campus is about um, three miles from the proper city center. You can see it here. We're on 320 acres of green space. We have our own lake. You can see one of the um, sports parks on the right hand uh, it is one of the largest indoor sports parks, um, uh, which is swimming pool. We have accommodations on campus in the UK. They are mostly single space, which means you don't have to share. And um, we do guarantee spaces for international students for their first year. 
We also have a student union with pubs as well as a live music venue. We also do have a music venue in the city center. We get 60 or more gigs per year um, in a good year, so in a non-COVID year. Our library is open 24 seven if you need a quiet place to study. We do have some new facilities on campus, the new science building, which is dedicated by Dr. Jane Goodall, as well as our uh, Productivity East, which is for our engineering students, as well as engineers who work within the community. And that allows for cross collaboration. Um, and finally, in the Library Center for Visual Arts, um, the reason I mention this is, is, is because it doubles as the Avengers headquarters um, in some of the films. So if you've seen some of the Avengers films like Infinity War, you've actually seen the UEA's campus without knowing it. These are the larger, broader areas of degrees that we have on our campus. Again, there are a lot more than this, but these are again just the, the wide ranging areas. Programs are standard three years in the UK. You do have an option on the vast majority of them to do a year abroad, a year in industry or a placement year. And while this does extend your program out to four years, typically during that extra standard, so we do look quite competitive. UEA is known for creative writing, environmental sciences, for sure. Sure, but we also do well with business, economics, and international development. We are on the UCAS application where you can kind of think of it like a common application for the UK. You can apply to five universities or five programs. Our requirements are 3.3 or higher GPA, three AP or IB exams, or you can also present an SAT or an ACT if the score is listed. Also, um, our AP exams are required for anybody who has a subject specific requirement on their course. So for example, engineering would require a science as well as a math AP. We look for a demonstrated academic interest within your essay. So what you want to do, why you want to do it, and kind of what you've done to prepare for it, as well as what you may want to do afterwards. Also, some of our courses may require interviews, auditions on portfolios, although this is um, not pretty, not very typical for a lot of the courses that you see at UEA. Undergraduate costs start at about 24,000 US dollars per year, keeping in mind again that this is only three years. Um, that's the duration of your study. They do go up from there and our lives are a bit more expensive. We're pretty much comparable to an out-of-state institution, although it does depend on where you're looking. And the cost of living um, given by the UK government as an estimate is $13,000. However, I will tell you that you can probably live more affordably than this in Norwich, but it is a good place to start when you're at your budget. Our scholarships for 2021 start at an automatic 4,000 pounds for just the first year. If you do write two short essays, you can get to 8,000 pounds per year. We do also have music and sports options. BAFTA loans are able to come to the UK for the um, vast majority of our courses, um, so you can bring those over if you're eligible. And students are even able to work either part-time or full-time um, while on breaks and then on or off campus. Please do connect with us officially on some of our social media. Also, we do have a student ambassador named Nicole from California in her last year of an international development degree and most likely staying on with us for a master's program. So we're happy to have her for an extra year. She's great about the student experience side of things. You are more than welcome to reach out to me and contact me directly with any questions. I do hope to. Thank you so much. Next up, we are gonna hear from the University of Glasgow. All right, hello everybody, one second. Just give, give me a minute, just slowly but surely popping up. All right, here we are. Okay, hi everybody, it should be coming on any second now. <clears throat> My name is Jay Shamlin, I'm with the University of Glasgow, sorry on the Spanish accent. I am based in Chicago, Illinois, and I recruit students from the Northeast and from the Midwest, so New Jersey and above, and the Midwest, like Michigan, the Midwest. Um, if, please feel free to take a photo of this. It has my contact info on it or scan any of the QR codes in the bottom right hand corner of the screen because of GDPR compliance, you are required to opt in to receive information from schools from the UK. We do not buy names from SAT and all that fun stuff. So without further ado, um, the University of Glasgow was founded in 1451. We are an ancient Scottish university fourth oldest English speaking behind Oxford, Cambridge, and St. Andrews. 33,000 students from over 140 different countries, but we're only about 
have Scottish or have cups or have Scottish students have international students, but only two percent U.S. So of that 33,000 students, I think about 800, maybe 850 are coming from the United States every year, every year in total right now. So again, I always ask students if you want to go overseas, how American do you want to feel? Do you want a bigger American population or a smaller one? We are 77th in the QS World Rankings as of the fall 2020, of 2021. <clears throat> 29th most international diversity in the world, 14th in the UK. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> but Scotland was voted the most beautiful country in the world in 2019. There's beautiful picturesque views. As you can see here, this is Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond is one of the famous locks, which is a lake. <clears throat> Sorry. Located right outside of Glasgow, about 30 minutes driving distance. It's great because, you know, if you want the nature, the hill walks, the picturesque views, it's 30 minutes outside of Glasgow. But Glasgow is one of the, most, one of the um, best cities in the world in 2019. It is <clears throat> the largest city in Scotland at about a billion people. Scotland as a country is only 5 million people. Um, so it is a small country where there are more sheep than there are people, but you are going to be in the largest city. Oh, we have 90 green parks. Uh, Glasgow stands for Dre Deer Green Place, which is uncommon for a big city. So there's so many need, like outdoor parks, gardens, lots of greenery. It's not like a normal city if you think of Manhattan or Chicago where it's hard to get to, to a park or something. And we're in that city of music, which means we have usually 150 live music events a week pre-COVID. It could be something as simple as, you know, like a barbershop quartet coming to town, or it could be something as Kanye West, you know, performing at the Hydro, which is the green building right there, which is the second busiest venue in all the world. We're located in Glasgow's West End, which is like a neighborhood. Think of a neighborhood in a city. So I think of like, if you've been to Chicago, I think of like how there's Lake View to, Chicago, to, to the Loop, or if you've been to Manhattan, it's Brooklyn to Manhattan. We're a neighborhood of the city. My favorite part of being in the West End is going to be Ashton Lane, which is actually the street uh, that's on the photo right here. It's a pedestrian only street and it's lined with restaurants, pubs, and shops. It's a great place to kind of just get together with your friends after class. It's maybe 200 feet behind our geology building and just kind of hang out with friends and just kind of be in the know and hang out in Scotland. As you can see, a gorgeous shot of campus here. And the first building that, stops, that probably pops out to you is our main building designed by Sir George in the 1800s. Um, what's great about this building is that you will, I guarantee you'll have class here because there's lecture halls in here, there's professor's offices in here, there's study spaces in here. Our colleges, most of our College of Arts and Sciences classes are in here, and so is our Adam Smith School for Business. There's a coffee shop, a dining hall option, et cetera. You'll see us library, as you know, you know what a library is, but on the 13th floor, we have special collections with how, which houses uh, Shakespeare's manuscripts, which is pretty unique. But you all spend a lot of your time in the Fraser Building. The Fraser Building is kind of like a student union, so kind of like your one-stop shop for anything that you need. On the fourth floor is a dining hall option. On the third floor is an international student support and visa office, our finance office, study abroad office, pretty much anything that requires your signature is what I say is going to be in that building. And then on the second floor is going to be our um, doctor's office and our bookstore, which is different from the gift shop, which is in the main building. Subject areas, we have over 500 different programs that you can combine with at University of Glasgow. The only things that we do not offer anything under the visual performing arts, we want to dance, music, acting, singing, you know, that is not us. But pretty much everything you see here, you could probably get into. Our most popular major for students in the U.S. is psychology, then international relations. We're number one in the U.K. for veterinary medicine, medicine, dentistry, and nursing. But I can keep going on. As you probably heard in Scotland, fun fact, um, the United States and France loosely based our education system off of Scotland. So all these Ivy schools and big schools in the U.S. can think of Scotland. You'll know that you apply to your field of study in Scotland or in the U.K. in general, which is very true. We just give you additional area of study during uh, your first year, and we give you four years instead of three years like the rest of the U.K. This is a physics major, and they chose chemistry and astronomy as their two areas to study, kind of test the waters between during their first year. Then their second year, they brought down chemistry, and the third year, physics for their for, um, third and fourth year for physics. So again, you're not doing two years of general edu education requirements. Instead, you're taking more of the courses that you want to take, which is why you come and declare it as your major. Entry requirements, you require 1280 SAT or 27 ACT, and then two AP exams of a four or above in relevant fields, because remember, you apply to your major, so if you're physics, you want AP Physics, AP Bio, AP Chem, AP Environmental Science. Um, if you're going into international relations, we want AP Psych or AP Gov, AP US History, AP Lit, something along those lines, relevant AP. But we are uh, going to be test optional for the incoming class of this year and for next year. So if you aren't able to take the exams, 
Some of our programs are test optional. I know a lot of our STEM programs are not going to be test optional, but we require a 3.5 unweighted GPA and then um, uh, AP honors coursework or dual enrollment as well. And then finally, tuition starts at actually $27,000 a year and goes up towards whatever program you're going into. Obviously, sciences, because the labs and things will be more expensive than a Scottish history degree. Um, we accept FAFSA as well. There is a undergraduate excellence scholarship that's available for students. Uh, that's a merit-based scholarship. You'll be automatically considered when you applied. And then finally, there are three U.S.-based officers. So if I am not working, Jason lives in D.C. and Ashley lives in Santa Ana, California, and we're all available to help you on your time zone with any questions you may have. And that is it. Thank you so much. And thank you to all six of our schools for presenting. Um, I'm going to ask our panelists to join me um, to answer one last question for everyone before we close out for the evening. So that question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And if you each want to answer um, in you know, 30 to 45 seconds um, in the order in which you present it, that would be great. Thank you, Cassie. I'm going to cheat slightly and tell you all about a fun fact about Essex. So we have um, a campus cat called Pebbles, um, who was basically adopted by our students union um, many years ago, and he's now a staple part of our campus. He has been in lectures. He has his own merchandise, which is sold on um, in our in our shops on campus. He has his own social media as well. So he has a Facebook and Instagram account. Um, so yeah, he's a very popular cat that lives on our campus. Hi, uh, so I would say uh, here at Brooks, a uh, very strong rowing program and that kind of uh, being quite uh, right along the river, there's a lot of rowing activities that happen here in the city. But um, one of the great sort of events that you can take part in is the Henley Regatta. Uh, you can kind of go down, dress up, enjoy uh, the regatta, see the races, uh, watch Oxford Brooks win uh, the racing team. They do really, really well. Uh, they've got more wins than Harvard, Oxford and Cambridge. So uh, that's a really good fun one. So I'm going to fall Emma's lead and also cheat a bit and talk about a fun fact. Um, but our uh, main building at ACD is actually the childhood home of Oscar Wilde. Um, if you don't know who Oscar Wilde was, um, he was a famous playwright and poet in like the late 1800s. Um, so there's a lot of tradition uh, in the building and you can just kind of feel that energy. And there's also like little rooms with Oscar Wilde's childhood toys and his father's surgical um, tools. So it's really cool to check it out. And uh, at IE, we celebrate IE Day, which is basically the, our international day for diversity, uh, where basically every single student union club and any students from a different nationalities perform on campus and share more about their experience, etc. And uh, I participate twice, and I really think that it's something that makes the experience at IE unique. So a tradition that we have on campus, which will hopefully be back soon is, um, I hate saying the name to students all the time, but it's called Pimp My Barrow. <laughs> so if you want to think about Pimp My Red, like they used to have on MTV. Uh, but basically, uh, students would take a wheelbarrow and decorate it, um, and then they would kind of parade it around. Um, so it's been off campus. Again, hopefully it will come back post-COVID. The good news is it's not just some random, like, event for no good. It is a charitable event, so it does raise money for charity. So I always like to say that um, it, it, is, it is for a good cause and it does have some good outcomes. But if you want to see more, you can probably Google it <laughs> and find more out about it as well. Honestly, I don't know if kids know what Pimp My Ride is, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> I know, I was going to say, if kids know what MTV is. <laughs> Um, but I just wanted to say my only thing is that at Glasgow we have in our main building, um, you saw there's four quadrants, there's grass on those that is pristine and it's basically you don't touch the grass or else you won't graduate. That is the whole, you know, um, not rumor, you know, myth, there you go. Um, so that is, that is the fun fact that I have.
Thank you all so much for sharing. Um, and thank you for taking time to present to our students and families this evening. And for those that joined us, thank you for coming. Um, when you close out of this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. This was just one of many different sessions happening this evening, so please be sure to sign up for more. In about a week, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com Michigan. Thank you all so much and have a wonderful evening.